Good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Merrick, a senior transportation planner with Ramsey County Public Works, and I would like to welcome you all this evening to the Vadness Boulevard Trail Design Study Open House. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, with me this evening, we have Greg Brown from Kimley Horn and Associates. We also have uh, city staff uh, Bryce Sheeran from the City of Little Canada um, and Katie Everett from uh, the City of Vadness Heights. Um, what we're uh, going to do for you this evening is go over some PowerPoint slides that um, provide an introduction to a planning study that we're just uh, beginning in Ramsey County in cooperation with the City of Vadness Heights and the City of Little Canada. The study is uh, focused on exploring the possibility of a future bike and pedestrian trail along Vadness Boulevard. And uh, the segment of Vadness Boulevard that we're looking at would essentially extend from the roundabouts at Rice Street by 694 and then continuing to the east um, on the south side of the lake over to uh, um, Kohler Road. Um, and the uh, purpose of the study is really to just explore uh, the possibility of the trail through this section. Like I said, there um, are lots of exciting opportunities to construct a trail through this area. And there's also some physical constraints with right away uh, trees, environmental features with the lake, et cetera, um, homes obviously, and other, other uh, features. So uh, we have hired Kimley Horn, uh, Greg Brown and his team uh, to help us uh, look at some engineering and planning um, work uh, in this area and help us um, make a determination if a trail is feasible and then also look at some design concepts that could potentially uh, eventually be constructed at some point um, in the future. Uh, we do not have a specific timeline for um, when the trail could be constructed, uh, but this is an exciting first step of the process to do this exploration. So uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Greg Brown and the Kimley Horn team to go over some further details of the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, as Scott said, I'm Greg Brown. I'm with Kimley Horn, and I'll be um, assisting the county here on, on developing some concepts and testing those against uh, the goals that, that the community is going to develop, as well as the design team and, and looking at things from a feasibility uh, perspective, etc. So tonight is really our first opportunity to uh, get, or I should say second, we had a meeting last night in person, but this round of meetings is our first uh, opportunity to get input from uh, the community at large, get your uh, specific knowledge that you have along the corridor, some get your input on goals, get your input on concerns that you might have that we can kind of throw into the pot and uh, utilize for the development of concepts and the testing of those as to how be how well they meet goals and, and um, in the intent of of the agencies as well as the public. So there's uh, a number of ways you can um, provide feedback and ask questions. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, and then after this presentation, we'll have kind of open it into a question and answer um, uh, format, which we'll, we'll do by um, typing in or commenting in, and then we'll, we'll get to those as they come in. I'll give a little bit more in depth overview of the project corridor. Scott kind of gave the limits. We have some exhibits here that will kind of zero in on those and talk about some of the opportunities and constraints that we see as uh, designers, but want to get your input on those for sure. Some of the things that we would be considering in, in our trail design efforts, uh, and then talk a little bit about the schedule and next steps. So there's probably two likely ways you're joining the meeting. If you're joining on the web, you can click the ask a question button should be in the lower right corner of your window uh, to submit a question. Then we've got uh, a team that will work here to 
to correlate those questions and organize them and then we'll we'll speak to those as we get to the end of the presentation so it's it's fine to, to ask a question beginning now to test that out and if you're on a mobile phone or some mobile device there should be a q a uh, question mark in the upper right corner of your screen so hopefully those two work if for whatever reason you aren't able to ask a question using that that method tonight feel free to email Scott or city representative and those questions will get to us. We may not answer them tonight, but we, we will answer them as a part of the, the process of the of the project. So uh, and we tonight isn't the only night either. It's the beginning. So feel free to ask questions over the course of the project. If something comes to mind a month from now or two weeks from now, you can email Scott or others and we'll get that to the design team and we'll um, get a response to that or incorporate that into the work that we're proceeding with. So this exhibit um, shows the, the general limits of the project. As Scott said, we're kind of starting on the Rice Street roundabouts, relatively new improvements on Rice Street to the, to the west, then following Badness Boulevard along the south side of the lake uh, to Edgerton Street and become Centerville Road and then the road will, or the project rather, will terminate up at County Road E and Kohler Road um, at the at the eastern end. Uh, we're really open-minded at this point. We want to kind of approach, approach the project without any biases, so we don't necessarily know if the trail should be on the north or the south, and possibly it, it might switch at various points in the in the corridor, although we really want to minimize any uh, crossing of the road to the extent possible. Um, so uh, we're interested in your opinions on things and your concerns on various elements throughout the corridor as I think you're, you're probably more of an expert or more uh, have more expertise uh, with some of the history than than the design team does at this point. But our intent is to get smart with the corridor based on input from yourselves and, and additional field work that we're going to do. So the goals that we've identified as designers uh, for the project are are included in this slide, but we don't want to presume that we know you know all the goals that should be considered. So this is certainly an area that we'd like to get input from you on uh, from a comment perspective or just contributing. If there's other goals or other uh, things that you'd like the project to achieve, certainly provide those to Scott or the the design team, and we'll make sure that they get uh, cataloged and and incorporated into the bigger vision of the project. So one of the things we look at always when we look at trail design is linking to other trails. And we know that there's a pretty healthy trail system already in Badness and Little Canada, especially around uh, Badness Lake, although that has a, a pretty noticeable gap along Badness Boulevard. So uh, as we go from Rice Street to uh, Ken Road E, there's a number of connections we want to make sure we do well, uh, including the trails that are around the lake today and then some future trails that we're anticipating uh, to, to occur and we'll get into those as we as we look a little bit closer in individual slides, individual areas. You know, safety and comfort and experience is a really a, a paramount design goal that we'd like to achieve and and uh, we know that the roadway is is intimidating, especially for younger children or families with children. Uh, so that's a, a primary goal of this project is to create a facility that feels safe and comfortable for you to get from the neighborhoods to Vadness Lake or just even uh, transiting all the way through from Rice Street to County Road E in a, in a safe and comfortable manner. Um, you know, projects like this need to be um, maintainable so that they're not just serviceable on day one, but they're, they kind of stand the test of time and uh, cities and the county will be the uh, entities maintaining this. So we're always keeping an eye towards uh, things that are, are good design that will make sure that the, the project or the trail stays maintained and therefore useful and safe throughout its life. Uh, you know, and not uh, the, the trail improvements will not only enhance movements of pedestrians and bikes, but they'll often have improvements to traffic safety. And those two kind of go hand in hand. We want that uh, we want traffic and peds and bikes to be able to cohabitate in a safe manner. So some of the things that we might explore as a part of this study could be intersection improvements or crossing improvements at, at intersections to make sure that not only um, can the people get across the intersections, but cars can see those people. Uh, they they can react and you know essentially avoid accidents that um, you know are, are 
uh, just not only unwanted, but unsafe and give uh, add to that sense of, of um, security. So uh, vehicle mobility is kind of part of our, our study and we'll be looking at things that might change bits of the roadway as well as adding a trail. Ad budding properties is another element that we want to be very sensitive to, uh, to the extent we can avoid any uh, uh, impacts to abutting properties, we'll do that. Um, one of the things that we're going to look at as we go forward in the is in the design is understanding exactly what uh, abuts the property. It, many people may understand there is there's usually some public land that extends beyond the actual paved roadway, uh, and we. You know, we can utilize that, but to the extent we can minimize our, our footprint in that and try to keep things as, as tight as possible, that's certainly one of the goals that we're going to have because we understand that uh, not only are there topographical issues where the, the grade or the, the uh, surface might fall rapidly towards the lake or rise rapidly towards the neighborhood, those are difficult things to build a trail around, so we try to minimize how we how we encroach in those areas and and uh, likewise when it's someone's front yard some houses are closer to the road than others we want to be sensitive to those things too as we as we lay out a footprint and some different options moving forward and at the end of the day a project uh, to be successful has to be feasible and constructible from a budget perspective so that's always something that we're going to have a kind of an eye on um, as we look at options uh, moving forward so this exhibit shows a little bit more detail on the, the overall corridor, again, starting at Rice Street on the west and kind of on the east. And we'll kind of zoom in on various segments of this and talk a little bit more in detail on, the, on each kind of piece. Every segment along here has its own challenges and, and opportunities, and we're uh, looking at that. What we've included in this exhibit are some things that we've observed as just uh, engineers and planners uh, somewhat uh, familiar with these types of projects. And I think as a as an engineer, one of the things that excites me the most about the Vadness uh, Boulevard project are the opportunities. It, it really cries out to, to have a trail design and built on it. And I think it has some uh, fantastic opportunities from a trail user perspective. And those really start out on the, on the West End as you get right down towards the lake, you, you have some great, great vistas looking at the lake, but one of the challenges we're going to have is coming down off of Rice Street, as many of you probably know, that's a, a relatively recent project and a lot of this roadway is actually on a structure, is actually on a bridge. So um, constructing a trail up to meet this particular area will, will likely require either modifications to that bridge or construction of a new uh, bridge of sorts. So those are things we're going to look at as we um, uh, look uh, get into the study and structures and bridges tend to cost money. So we want to be very careful about what we look at there to try to, you know, keep an eye towards budget, as I said earlier. This next segment is once we get down to lake level or close to lake level, we're on what we call a causeway. And it's got a great opportunity to have uh, trail users get right up near the lake and not just the visual, but kind of the, the, the sense of being close to the water is always a positive thing. Uh, a challenge we'll have here though is, is the fact that we don't have a, a lot of real estate, so and we need to be sensitive to the lake, the environmental aspects of the lake. So we'll, we'll look at how a trail might fit here and, and how we could design a trail to minimize our footprint either uh, into the lake. We certainly don't want to fill into the lake, but that might require some clever uh, reconfiguring of the space that we have up on top, possibly some some element of minor amount of structure. This this image here, you can see part of that bridge that goes up to Rice Street. So this area has got great opportunity, but it does have some some potential challenges from a budget perspective. Another point I'd like to make is on the east end of this first time we kind of touch Badness Lake, I think we want to look at uh, this intersection with the park entrance as well as the neighborhood. And instead of having a couple offset streets, maybe we can um, look at realigning the street that's in the park property to, to better uh, offset the, with the neighborhood street. That's always good design from a crossing perspective and something that would make a, a safer crossing, a crossing where uh, cars and can see the people on the bikes uh, better than they do today. As we move east from that park entrance, we get into a, an area that 
has generally the regional park and the, the lake beyond that on the, the north side or the the left side of the road as you're moving east and has neighborhoods and and the school, the high school on the uh, south side. So one of the things that we'll be considering here is uh, that that debate on, you know, should the trail be better served on the north or the south? Or I should say, should the community be better served if the trail was on the north or south? If the trail runs on the north, it's it's continuous. It has really no no crossings or conflicts to speak of. It kind of takes advantage of that parkland. It does have some steep slopes that we have to, to manage here as you get to the east. And as you're coming from the neighborhoods, you essentially have to cross the road to get to the trail. So there's a number of um, you know, street crossings that we'd want to look at and, and the safety of those and how, how those may work. If a trail was on the south side, you wouldn't have those crossings, but you, you do want to get to the regional park. So you know, there's, there's a trade-off where maybe we, we do collect people that are coming from the neighborhoods and they don't have to cross the relatively busy road, but then at some point they'll likely want to cross to get to the park here and then cross back at Edgerton to get around the lake there. So we'll be looking closely at those intersections in that case to make sure they're as safe as possible. So those are all, all things that are in our, in our consciousness, if you will, as we look in this area. And But we're very interested in feedback from anyone that's that lives in this area to, to provide comments or your insight on, on various um, items. Edgerton Street intersection is another area that we think can be improved from a safety perspective, both in terms of vehicles as well as bicycles and pedestrians. The road or that intersection has quite a severe skew today, as I'm sure everyone knows that's, that's on this call. So we'll be looking at trying to soften that. And we know uh, that there's some redevelopment that's going on here in the Northeast Quadrant. So uh, we'll be coordinating with the city um, uh, along the lines of how those plans materialize and how that might um, synergize with the, with the potential trail plans. There's also a little a connection here. There's a gap in the trail network from along Edgerton that would get people up to that existing trail that run, runs along the east and, and the north side of the lake. So we're aware of that, and that's something I think we want to look at as part of the study to see what what could be done along those lines. And if if we can make a connection here and make a good connection here, all of a sudden we have a really powerful loop around Vadnais Lake. Uh, this is clearly a gap um, in that in that lake loop, and a lot of people drive up into the park from the neighborhood because they don't feel comfortable on Vadnais Boulevard. So our intent with this project would be to to not have to do that. You know, give people an option to to walk or bike right from your home in this in these neighborhoods and get right into the in the into the trail system or do that loop and, and get back home and feel safe about it. Then as we go east of Edgerton, the uh, the character of the roadway changes into more of a kind of residential neighborhood. We have houses on both sides as opposed to the park on one side and neighborhoods on the other side. We have driveways that come along the roadway. So we'll be looking at at this stretch road. And I would say that we also have a fairly wide existing roadway in this corridor. So I think this is this is an area we would look at uh, options that might reduce the roadway footprint and take some of that space and dedicate it to a, a trail that would be on one side or the other. So that's one thing that we we, we would look at. We did have a, a meeting last night and some, some uh, residents in the community asked about utilizing the railroad corridor which is just east of Centerville Road. So that's something um, we can explore as well with the railroad. Um, it's kind of an interesting comment, but uh, something we'll put into the hopper and, and have a discussion with them, see if that's got legs as well. And like I said, at this point, we're, we're pretty open-minded on things. Um, and if there's some, some opportunity to use that, the railroad is open to that. We're really at their mercy on the railroad, but we will have a conversation see what See what comes out of that. Ideally, we we will continue north or make make connections to the north. The school is an important connection. So if we do look at the railroad corridor, we'd want to make sure that we can still get to some of these these neighborhoods here to the north. So those are, those are some of the connectivity things that are always in the back of our mind as we um, think about trail design and planning. So a little. Uh, uh, 
refresher on the schedule. Scott kind of alluded to this. The elements that are in blue here are elements that are in our study that we're in the in the beginning of. So we're in the fall of 2021. We're gathering feedback. We're doing some homework uh, with measuring on the site and doing some map work. Uh, to be to be able to speak to ideas and test concepts in a meaningful way. Uh, we, in, we envision taking that information we're getting from yourselves tonight as well as our public meeting last night and input we might be getting over the next few weeks and, and start uh, sketching up some concepts. We envision coming back to the community in the winter of uh, 2022. Get your thoughts and some concepts that we developed there. Um, look at at uh, refinements to those concepts and uh, probably coming back to either um, maybe a preferred concept or a preferred couple concepts that would be carried forward and and those would be all documented in a, a summary report that we're envisioning in the early summer of 2022 and a report like that could be used for funding application moving forward these three kind of grayish bubbles represent work that's not in this current scope, but what would we, uh, but would be the logical succession of uh, the project moving forward. So finding uh, some funding, and I would say Ramsey County and the cities are quite adept at that. That's something that's kind of done on a routine basis. So you're not always guaranteed to get the funding, but I think the county and the cities are well, well aware of a lot of potential funding opportunities. So I think if we get a project that the community has coalesces around, there's some consensus on that uh, we'll be seeking money or those entities will be seeking funding to build something. And um, I, I believe um, just as someone that has done a lot of trail work over the years, making connections is usually a strong element of of uh, seeking funding from uh, you know larger entities, whether it be federal government, the state government or regional solicitations and this project has got a lot of potential that way. So cautiously optimistic that um, it would score quite well on funding applications. But final design would would tend to follow that funding element of the project and then construction, of course, would would follow after that. So as Scott said, there's not there's really nothing set on a timeline here. Uh, all we all we have kind of power over right now is this initial work that we envision um, kind of buttoning up or getting packaged up by uh, summer of 2022. So uh, with that, it kind of ends our, our formal presentation, if you will, just kind of a reminder that we've got the, the feedback op options that are coming in, and I believe people have been uh, messaging us with questions, so that's great. We'll get to those here in a minute, but you can always go to the website. You can always contact Scott at Ramsey County and then your comments or questions will get to the design team and we can get back to you either through the design concept development or just through res responding to your calls or questions. And old fashioned telephone is fine as well. So don't feel like you have to be, you know, online and the website has has ways to, to contact you. I would also say you can sign up to be notified uh, with updates on the website. So whether it's another meeting or maybe some some options might get posted on the, on the website. Comments ultimately that we're getting in this round of, of engagement will be kind of synopsized and put on the website and then probably within the next few weeks. So you'll be able to see what your neighbors and, and other people in the community have, have asked about. And we'll, to the extent we can answer those or respond to those, we'll also include some answers to, to those um, questions. So with that, um, you know, uh, thanks for your participation to date. I, I'm uh, looking over my other screen. I, I think we've got um, 15 or 20 questions here to get started out with. Um, I will kick that off with with a uh, few and then primarily probably Scott and I will try to do our best to answer what we can tonight and some things we might just have to get back to you by. Um, so the first question um, that I'm going to uh, address here has to do with uh, elevation changes along Badness Boulevard. So um, I think it might relate to the um, to the the whole bridge element that I, I referred to. The question says, you know, especially close to Rice Street, 
um, will the trail uh, design potentially impact development from a cost perspective? I think, uh, I believe the city does own some, some properties in that area. I, you know, at this point, we don't, uh, we don't know enough about kind of exactly where we'd be, but we will be coordinating with the city as we get up by Rice Street and be looking at options if the trail is kind of adjacent to the roadway as the roadway currently exists. Uh, that clearly will kind of um, have to have to work with whatever gets developed in that corner. I think some of that planning is has already been in the city's uh, mindset, um, but um, as we go forward, clearly we'll be we'll be looking at that as a as an issue, and that there is a trade off. We don't want to necessarily add any more structure than we have to, but uh, we'll be looking at that to see if we do have to add structure and it's outside of that existing roadway. We'll be looking to see how that ties into the, the development potential uh, up in the corner. Um, the, uh, there's a comment about uh, the turn between Badness and Twin Lake Boulevard by the Taco Bell. Um, it's unsafe and poor visibility. Uh, and also apparently there's you know winter freezing issues so that's a good uh, a good comment to, to get as you know, someone as from the community that people use that we'll look at that uh, from a standpoint of uh, trail users and if we uh, if people are crossing you know at that location to see what we can do to make those visibility lines visibility better we also will look at the trail slope too when it comes to freezing uh, we're not necessarily can can solve say a road freezing problem, but we do look at trail grades and it, to the extent we can make them as flat as possible for some of those same reasons. Often if we can do better than the roads, sometimes roads are are kind of fixed in their grades, but some if we have an ability to have the trail flatter than the road, uh, we will look at that that potential. So that's something we'll keep in mind relative to that comment. Um, I think uh, there's a comment about buckthorn removal, um, and I think uh, there there's clearly is buckthorn in the in the corridor. I think there has been some removal recently. I believe the county or it might have been a joint county city endeavor removed some buckthorn and other uh, vegetation along Edgerton Road, kind of on the east side of Badness. I think there's areas along the curvature of the roadway that have vegetation. Some of that's probably buckthorn. That's a good comment and something that we could consider you know we often try to minimize removal of vegetation but there's there could be an opportunity with this project to actually take care of some invasive vegetation remove that as part of the trail project and it kind of kills two birds with one stone sometimes having the trail adjacent to roadways will one of the net benefits side side benefits is really adding to sight lines just by the nature of having that extra kind of facility that's that's created some clearing there's a couple questions I think Scott is probably um, better adept at answering. I'll, I'll um, hand over to him you know, to address uh, two or three items here on the list if you're there, Scott. Sure, Greg. Um, I think the next question that I see has to do with funding availability for the project. So the county has uh, what's called a transportation improvement program. That's a five year construction or capital improvement program that is updated annually. Uh, the current TIP, which is the acronym for Transportation Improvement Program, um, goes through the year 2025, and we're just in the process now of developing uh, the new TIP through 2022 to 2026. Uh, so that, that program currently does not have this project uh, listed as a funded project. Um, however, as I discussed in the introduction, um, uh, the county is partnering with City of Little Canada and Vadness Heights to explore uh, the feasibility of this project. And so this is the exciting first step of that process. Um, and so um, after this process is completed, we'll kind of revisit things and kind of see where we're at um, and take it from there. You know, our TIP includes a variety of funding sources, uh, local funding from cities, uh, there's state aid funding from MnDOT, um, county property tax dollars. We also pursue uh, special grants through the Minnesota DNR or Metropolitan Council, which is the federal 
uh, metropolitan planning organization for the region. So there's a number of uh, funding pots that we do have access to. Some are competitive at a regional level or statewide level, and some are of the funding pots are appropriations directly through property taxes and um, gas tax, uh, et cetera. So, um, so those options are all on the table. And after our study process is complete, we'll kind of see where we're at and, and take it from there. Um, the question, uh, there's another question following that about uh, St. Paul Water Department stance on this project. Um, I'm not sure if either of the cities have had discussions with the St. Paul Water Department, but I guess I'm not aware of the county uh, speaking to the Water Department about a particular stance uh, on the project right now. Um, I'll move down here. There's a couple other ones that I might be able to address. Um, would Vadness Park be turned into a more intensive um, parking lot uh, to assist with the trail's future um, traffic volume? Um, I guess that that is a question that would probably need to be uh, discussed as part of our, our overall county uh, park plan development. Um, Scott Yonke is in charge of our parks and trails, uh, off-road trails um, in Ramsey County. And so um, I'm not sure if I can give you a direct answer to that this evening. That's something that would have to be explored as necessary uh, in the future. Um, it's another question about uh, is it likely that Vadness Boulevard will need to be closed during the construction process? If so, how will residents be made aware? Um, that is something that, you know, is um, a number of years down the road that we'll have to explore during the final design and uh, construction plan development process. Uh, it would really have to do with um, the scope of the project. Um, and maybe also the time of year that the project is being constructed. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, if there's a, a logical um, alternative route that could be used. Um, and so I'm not really equipped this evening to um, answer that question. I think I'll hand it back over to Greg uh, for some of the other questions. Thank okay. you. Uh, yes, there's a question or kind of a comment, which is, a a perfect kind of thing we're we're looking for uh, input on is that there's some prairie remnant prairie plant uh, patches along the north side of Adnes Boulevard, um, and therefore you know that's something. If a trail was on the north side, we we uh, potentially impact those. Uh, might be a good reason to consider a trail on the south side. So it's good good input and something we'll incorporate into our kind of our log of data and facts and we'll try to get a little bit smarter on that too the the exact um you know nature of them exactly where they're located and and uh you know uh, how we need to preserve them as best we can i think something i would i would mention too is you know with the trail project you know we look at this a little somewhat holistically as i i hopefully communicated earlier. So I think we're not just looking at putting a trail in, but we're looking at kind of uh, how that trail connects to other trails in the area, but also how it interacts with the environment. You know, I mentioned we need to be sensitive to the lake front, of course, and, that, and, and the park frontage, you know, and all, all the natural areas for that matter. But the trail project also can maybe provide an opportunity to expand some of those natural planting areas or add trees where, you know, that might might be uh, desirable, yeah, uh, reforestation, et cetera. So uh, those are some of the things that we'll consider as well. And water quality uh, will be would be part of our, our calculus in, in the trail design. So at this stage, we're really just looking at kind of opportunities. We're not necessarily going to design things per se, but I think we would want to flag opportunities to uh, add maybe prairie plantings or opportunities to expand a forest area or improve water quality in the, into the lake. Um, so those are things that we'll, we'll envision kind of uh, identifying uh, locations for in the plans. 
there was a comment or question about gaps in the trails and yeah if there's one thing that you know the project intends to do and is a high priority is to to close gaps and and just the nature of this corridor is a is a big gap and and the fact that we can get a trail in here would be a, a huge uh, improvement in a in a gap that's long overdue to be to be closed so that's high in our consciousness in the in the planning of the trails and we we also want to as a part of that we want to make sure crossings and access to the trail is as safe as possible because getting to the trail from the neighborhoods is, those are also gaps in a way so crossing a busy street is a gap might be shorter than a mile long gap on Vadens Boulevard but nevertheless it's it's still a gap so we want to make the crossings from the neighborhoods to the trail uh, as safe as possible to to kind of close those gaps as well um there's a question or comment about boardwalks uh would we consider using boardwalks and I, i'd say the short answer is yes you know, we're open-minded at, at this point um and you know likely uh places that those might come in handy would be where we're we're limited in space and we're uh, abutting the lake and then we have a, deep, a sharp drop off so uh the the nature of them you know i think when people see or hear about boardwalks um it doesn't necessarily mean in, in my mind that it's a wooden you know structure like you're on the on the beach it could be a concrete trail or concrete surface which tends to be more maintainable uh but it it would have that same kind of general location and feel it might be overhanging the water a little bit or adjacent to the water uh so i think that's a technique that we're going to we're considering and envision considering in order to handle those tight um that that tight cross section that we have when we're near the lake um there's a comment about accessibility uh with special needs people children and adults and absolutely so I, i'd say uh as we look at trail design today and this has been true for for the last several years but really uh all of the things that we we consider when we look at the trail design is to be as accessible as possible. So the the things about closing gaps and all that apply to um, able-bodied and and handicapped persons, but we're also looking at just in general uh, designing intersections and the trail itself to be usable for wheels and wheeled uh, people using wheeled uh, devices, or just people that aren't as comfortable walking. You know uh that than others are biking than others so that's that's paramount in our consciousness in in the design of the trail i think um I, I mentioned earlier that even though there's some steep slopes on the roadway something that we try to think about when we look at trails is can we make that flatter so it it isn't a you know a scary experience as you're coming down from rice street down to lake some one person's thrill ride is another person's harrowing experience. So we try to make things as to the extent we can uh, improved as much as possible. So that's a comfortable, um, safe experience. It, it, looking at this design from the experience of someone using it, whether they're on a bike, they're walking, they're on a wheelchair, stroller, et cetera, is something that we, we keep in mind. So yes, uh, absolutely uh, special needs and, and um, uh, all ages and abilities is, is something that we, we consider as we um, uh, design this, this type of project. There's a comment about speeding um, and uh, we had heard that as well last night at the public meeting. One of the uh, uh, maybe side effects, if you will, or, or benefits of, of what we may be doing relative to the trail will could uh, also provide some benefit to, to reducing speeds in the corridor. So one of the techniques that we we often use in road design that's probably most effective with with controlling speeds is kind of the physical nature of the road, the width of the road, the curvature, what what you see. So the narrower that that patch of asphalt is, and if there's kind of vegetation or curbs on the side that, that tends to kind of constrain things. When I mentioned at intersections, we might narrow neck the road down so it's as narrow as possible and the crossing is as short as possible. That also tends to instill in drivers a, a need to, to slow down because it's a it's a smaller space. It's just kind of a natural reaction. So some of the things that we will do maybe with trail design and uh, as an impetus 
will oft, often also um, translate to lower speeds. So it's it's something we have in our toolbox and our consciousness and something that we'd apply uh, in this corridor. And it's some, a comment that we did here last night and we, we anticipate doing things to try to to uh, help reduce uh, speeds best we as best we can. Um, looking here to see uh, oh, there's a, a question about um, overall cost of the project. Um, we I'd say we we don't really have a uh, any idea. We haven't really done any math on that. I mean, I, I think um, it, it's something we'd want to be um, we're conscious of as we go through. It's probably uh, you know north of a million dollars and south of a few million dollars, but uh, it really depends on what might get packaged in the project. The other thing I I'd bring up on relative to cost is this could get um, designed but built in in stages and and maybe there's some road work that happens that's not necessarily part of the trail but gets done and bits of the trail get built with it so uh the cost question is kind of a difficult one to to pin down at at this point you if you just put your blinders on and said build a trail that's a mile and a half long that's one cost but there's a lot of factors here including potential structures and things that that would um impact that so it's a little early to to get too serious, but it's a, it's a substantial project. Um, so it is something that, like Scott alluded to, I think we'd be most likely looking for funding partners to help with that cost. It's not the type of thing that the county or the cities tend to have to have the funds kind of laying around that they could they could fund it with. Um, Scott, I believe there's a couple questions I see uh, you might want to take a stab at. Sure, um, I think yeah, there's a question about uh, there's an existing section of trail um, kind of in the north east side of the lake, I believe just north of Vadness Boulevard that is currently unpaved. Um, from Edgerton up to roughly McMenemy, McMenemy. And there's a question about will that be paved at some point in the future? Um, I did have a discussion last night with our um, Ramsey County Park staff, and the answer to that question is yes, there is a plan to pave that section of trail uh, at some point. I don't have the exact schedule for when that is planned to occur, but I'm assuming that that uh, is a relatively uh, high priority for the county and um, hopefully can happen uh, relatively soon, but I don't have a specific time schedule for you uh, on that. Um, I can check back with the parks staff and see if they have further information uh, on that. There's a couple here I can jump in on. I see um, someone had asked about the the Big Woods Brewery. That's you know the redevelopment that's that's planned adjacent to Edgerton Road. So uh, absolutely, man. I think that's a case where I, I mentioned earlier. We'll be working with the city closely to understand how the that design is going to develop or that site's going to develop. That intersection of Edgerton Road likely could could see some improvement, and so we'll be looking at that and then. Sure, the city and county kind of may look at that in its independently from the trail, but knowing we would like to get a trail through that area, we'll we'll all kind of um, coordinate our our thinking on on that particular intersection and all that. Also, would consider access to that that uh, that new development. You know, it would be a presumably an, a a mag a magnet for people in the neighborhood. And it'd be great if you could walk or stroll there, and maybe even better if you walk or stroll home from the brewery after you've had a had a couple of beers. So I think the trail and the brewery could have some good good synergy, and it's something that we think about when we kind of uh, plan these projects in conjunction with city and county planning staff. Uh, there's a question about uh, existing road shoulders and like would the project alter that? And uh, the answer is it, it could. Uh, so I think as we look at at the corridor along the way, some of the techniques that we could use in order to 
take advantage of the available space that we have, given the steep slopes on e either side in some cases, would be to, to narrow the road, potentially reduce those shoulders to, to minimum. Uh, but I, and I think that if I'm gathering the kind of the gist of the comment is, you know, I know bikers, certain bikers will just stay on the road and we understand that. So we want to be sensitive to that as well. Uh, we some bikers may prefer to be on the road, even if there's a uh, 10 foot wide trail, you know, five feet away or 10 feet away. So we want to give some consideration to that as we might be looking at looking at road sections. Um, but we very well could be looking at concepts that would uh, reduce or alter the, the existing typical or the existing existing section of the roadway, including the shoulders. Um, the there's a question about, you know, is the trail combined or separated pedestrian and, and bike? Um, you know, that's I would say that could be determined and there may not be a one size fits all here. I would say in general, my Knowing the space that we have is somewhat limited and constrained, the most efficient solution will tend to be a trail that will serve uh, both pedestrians and bikes and you know wield every kind of everyone in both directions. Um, there may be locations, maybe there's an overlook or or um, instances where it makes sense to have a pedestrian facility or a bit of sidewalk or something that's adjacent to the trail or peels off from the main trail. So that if you're if you're resting or looking at the lake, for example, you're not blocking people moving along the trail. But I would I kind of anticipate at this point, based on what I know about the width of the corridor and what's available, we're probably talking about one trail facility uh, that would serve all all users uh, just to be efficient with the, the space. Um, the uh, there's a. a question about um, maintenance, uh, winter, winter trail maintenance. I think what's typically occurred on these type, this caliber of trail, a regional trail, is they would be maintained in the winter. Um, I'll, I'll hand off to Scott here in a, in a moment, but um, typically it would either be Ramsey County or the cities that the trail falls into as far as jurisdiction, but I would anticipate this this trail facility, a facility of this caliber, would be plowed in the winter. Um, Scott Yonke, uh, who who manages trails for Ramsey County, would speak to more details as to you know are they? I don't think they're typically salted or sanded, but I really would defer to to him on that. We might have to get get back to you. But if you if you've uh, utilized other regional trails, it would be maintained in a similar fashion. Um, there is a comment about lighting, and I think. Um, there might be locations where lighting would be uh, placed, but typically we wouldn't light the entirety of the trail. Sometimes cities might elect to do that, and that would be something the city could participate in and essentially fund. But uh, from a county perspective, and I'll let Scott weigh in here as well, typically we wouldn't be lighting the, the trail other than maybe intersection crossings, you know, to make those safer. And Scott, if you want to add to that and Right, yeah, I think uh, the lighting issue, that would be something where we would have to have a discussion with the cities and I guess, uh, you know, city of Vadness Heights and city of Little Canada, Little Canada and uh, kind of determine uh, their interest in, in doing that. And um, so that would be something that would be probably discussed much further down the project process closer to the final design once we have the funds in place for construction but that would be more of a joint decision between the county and the cities um, and then um, maintaining the trails um, keeping them free of um, ice and snow um, that is a the county does have a policy that um, trails along county roads, the maintenance of those trails are the responsibility of the cities where the trails are located. So um, that's something that um, we would look to the cities um, to do and to uh, maintain. Um, and I guess that I think addresses both of those. There was a question on um, 
could the could the old road that kind of connects from Rice Street on the back side of the the little um, development, um, I guess, would be kind of south of Badness Boulevard be utilized instead of that Badness Boulevard structure or or the need to build a new structure. It's an interesting comment and something that uh, we're thinking about. Uh, we have have uh, inquired a little bit with the city and county on that. Um, that gets into kind of longer range planning in that area. So it's something I think we'll address. It's attractive from the standpoint of it could avoid uh, a structure, but it would potentially involve a crossing of Badness Boulevard of the trail. And I think there are some longer range plans that might change that whole area up a little bit. So we would want to be careful about not building a trail that, that becomes obsolete because it it's, uh, you know, redevelop for for something else. So, uh, yes, it's a good comment. It's something I I caught my eye as a engineer with putting my you know cost conscious hat on, thinking let's let's look at this, and I think we will consider it in the study. Uh, but it it might have some drawbacks that aren't aren't maybe readily apparent now, but could be long range uh, considerations. Um. There's a question here about could solar lighting be an option? Um, um, I suppose uh, that is potentially possible, although it's not really the traditional method that we use to uh, electrify lights um, in public rights away, but uh, certainly anything's possible. And again, that would probably be more of a, a issue or question to be discuss closer to the final design prior to construction that would involve uh, uh, significant input from both both cities. There's a question about um, from a cross country skier about, you know, could there be a groom trail around the loop of Badness Lake? And I'm a cross country skier as well, so I could see the see where that would be very attractive. Um, something we'll certainly pass along to Scott and, and the parks staff. I, I would say we're quite challenged in space and being a skier too, I maybe I'll try to do what I can to see if, see if there's a way that could happen. But, um, you know, it's, it's probably a it's probably a long shot at this point, but it could comment. Uh, it would be a really fantastic uh, ski loop, nice and relatively flat and uh, interesting. So uh, maybe in it's possible Scott Yonke at the county has already given some thought towards towards that, but we'll uh, we'll keep that in the in the logbook for for comments to to consider. There was also a comment about mirrors, uh, you know, potentially using mirrors on some of the blind intersections, and you know that's that's an interesting comment as well. Not something we we do regularly we off you know our first choice would be to kind of see what we can do just with the physical alignment of the intersecting streets but sometimes we don't have much choice with that so that that's something we could do sometimes we'll we could also consider signage or other types of, of treatments that will help um you know address the, the blind blindness or uh sight lines around corners or two intersections but you know mirrors is, is something we can um, talk about. I don't know, and Scott maybe could could uh, answer this too, if that's used at all, if there's other locations in the county. I, I have seen it here and there around town, but it's fairly rare. It might tend to be more in the private, you know, world than the public domain, but it's, it's a good, good comment. Yeah, I guess I can't really speak directly if we have um, mirrored areas on any of our trails or not. Um, I think, you know, we would be designing to uh, MnDOT state aid standards. So I think uh, that would play a big role as, you know, as to whether or not uh, MnDOT would approve of that sort of uh, treatment um, for the design and whether they would feel that would be safe or not. Uh, but yeah, I guess I really can't answer that question directly. Um, I believe 
Emma, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've we've addressed all the comments that have come in to date. I know we're coming up on our witching hour here at eight o'clock. Is there anything else that you see that we haven't spoken to? No, I think you've covered everything. There is a follow up to the parcel question on um, Twin Lake and we'll we'll follow up with the city um, on that and get back to that that person specifically. Um, so I don't I probably misunderstood exactly the the location. So that's will something we'll follow up on just the person commenting on that. It's, um, just let you rest. Uh, rest well tonight. <laughs> we we understand we didn't quite answer the question as intended, but we'll get to it. So yeah, with that, uh, Scott, if I don't know, there's anything else you'd uh, right like to relay, but I think we covered everything that's come in. Yes, uh, I just want to thank uh, everybody that took some time out of their evening tonight to join us uh for this presentation um it's a very exciting project uh that the community of little canada and madness heights are also i know very excited about we want to thank bryce and katie for joining us tonight as well and being part of the conversation and greg brown and the kimley horn team uh so this is the start as greg mentioned of a um a fairly long process that will evolve over the winter and spring months and into the early summer so we would encourage you all to stay involved on the social media platforms and the uh, project website uh, if you could just type into google if you don't know the exact address just type in ramsey county and then vadness boulevard trail and then uh, i'm sure it'll take you to the link if you don't already have it, it'll take you to the website and all of the information should be there you can watch this presentation again there'll be other information about upcoming meetings and you can uh, provide comments directly to the city or to myself and we'll get back to you uh, as soon as we can. So I guess with that, I'll um, sign off and thank you all again for coming this evening and have have a nice evening. Yep. Thank you, everyone.